In a recent interview, our guest, Flat Earth Math, provided an observation of the sun not appearing to shrink as it traveled across the sky. Here you can see his photo at noon, lined up against his photo 21 minutes before sunset, wherein you can see that the sun appears to be the same size in both photos. Many people have observed this, both with and without a solar filter. And many people claim that this is solid proof that the Earth is a globe, and that this observation would be impossible on the Flat Earth model. Straw man alert! Whose Flat Earth model are they talking about? Herein, globe earthers tend to invent their own faulty model and then say, see, it doesn't work. Please note how in Eric Dubay's explanation, we saw the sun appear to set, but we didn't see it appear to shrink. Note how the sun doesn't appear to shrink here. Nor do we see the sun appear to shrink here. Just exactly where does he say the sun is supposed to shrink? What Eric Dubé didn't explain was why the sun didn't appear to shrink. Rob Skiba, on the other hand, did explain that. The atmosphere, especially over water, is made up of zillions and zillions of tiny convex drops of water. Then collectively, perhaps they all combine to make one big convex lens, in which case it would act like a magnifying glass. Okay, so with that in mind, let's look up some websites dealing with the refraction of light. You might see a graphic, something like this, showing light bending downward. And now we've all seen pictures of, you know, a pencil or something in a glass of water and how not only does refraction bend the image downward, it also magnifies it. I'm going to say that again. Water causes refraction, bending the image downward, and magnifies it. Now there is something else I want you to take into consideration. Here is a yardstick on the floor. Now watch this ball shrink as we move it across the yardstick. This is what globe earthers claim the sun should be doing on a flat earth. All right, now here is a yardstick on the ceiling. Now watch as this ball moves across the stick on the ceiling. Does it appear to shrink to you? It's moving the same distance. Now where do we see the sun? On the floor or in the sky? Can you see how people either intentionally or unintentionally misrepresent the flat earth here? They act as if the sun would have to be on the ground in order for the flat earth model to work. Now I know many people are going to look at this yardstick and say, oh, well that ball is barely going a few feet. That is hardly going all the way across the ceiling. But the fact is, we really don't know just how far the sun is actually moving. If we were to look through a microscope and see something move all the way across our view, we would say, wow, that moved a lot. But if we step away from the lens, our view changes and we will see that the thing barely moved at all. We simply don't know how thick the firmament is. And if the sun is in the firmament or above the firmament, we have no way of knowing just how much it is being magnified. Therefore, we just don't know how much the sun actually moves. To our knowledge, no one has gone up to the firmament and tried drilling through it to see how thick it is. Though we do know people have thrown several nukes at it. To learn more about the firmament, please see Lesson 7, Part 2, and the lessons that follow. There's a link in the description that'll take you there. While we don't know everything, that's okay. Just remember what we don't know doesn't invalidate what we do know. And please be aware of the incredulity fallacy. Just because we might not be completely sure as to how something works, 
that doesn't mean we are wrong. Having said all of that, when people argue that the sun's apparent size disproves the flat earth, we disagree, and we acknowledge that claim as a straw man argument. This has been Professor Kyle Adams of the Flat Earth Institute of Science. Thank you for watching.